Hello, I'm Shane the Catskills, um, and you might know me um, from the Olive Free Library. I'm a library clerk there. And if you're watching this, it's probably because you've checked out a tarot deck from the library. And so this video is meant to help you get started. Um, so when you checked out the deck, it also came with some printed pages. Um, which is going to give you a little bit more uh, meat on the bones, so to speak, about the structure of a tarot deck and um, the suits and elements and so on and so forth. And so I'm not going to talk about that here. What I really want to talk about is how to actually just work with the tarot. And um, ideally, you'll find your own way to do that. I'm just gonna share some ideas that have worked for me. And um, I think that the most important thing to remember about tarot is that it is originally a game. It's a game, right? So there's a sense of play about that. Um, and so while the tarot is both a complex system of 78 cards, divided into major and minor arcana and four suits with elemental and astrological correspondences. That is all true. And at the same time, it's a game and everything about it is made up and you can enter it anywhere without knowing anything about all of that structure. And so um, it's kind of really good to think about right at the beginning, what helps you enter does it help you to actually um, work with some of the structure, um, learn about the anatomy of the deck and learn some traditional meanings? And, or is it easier for you to enter with no structure? Um, and that's why I want to sort of um, invite you into a couple of ways of discovering what works for you. And I feel like what I really want to convey is that the barometer that you can use for um, how you work with tarot is, um, is it a pleasure, right? So if a particular way of studying and entering the cards is a pleasure, do that. And if an idea that I bring up or that you come across makes you kind of feel either overwhelmed or put off, like, don't worry about it. Um, so in a way, uh, beginning to work with tarot can be a way of um, beginning to work with your own preferences and actually learning what those are. So to begin at the beginning, um, when I'm getting ready to work with tarot, I've fired up all of my altars and I have, you know, a mug of my favorite, favorite beverage. I have flowers. I'm sitting at my favorite little place to sit. And so all of that signals to me that um, I'm about to do something. Um, that I really enjoy doing, which is working with tarot. And so what I really want to encourage you to do, actually, before you crack open any books or do any sort of study, and I want to tell you that your library card via Hoopla um, and via the whole library system gives you access to so many excellent tarot resources. All of my favorite books are available for instant download on Hoopla. And so I've included all of that in the handout that you're getting. And so if you're the, the type of person who really likes to tuck in and do some study, it's all there. It's all there. But this is um, more of a just, okay, I just took the cards out of the pack. What should I do now? And, um, you know, tarot cards are... Um, images. This, this is the, this might hurt tarot deck. This is my personal deck that I like to work with. Um, they're images and sometimes there are also words on the card. And so to actually just open up the deck that you checked out or that you have in your hand and actually just go through the deck card by card and just take in the images and notice which cards um, you respond to, either you're drawn to them or they kind of freak you out a little bit. And also notice the cards that you don't seem to have any response to at all. All of that is information. And you might want to get yourself a notebook that you use just for your tarot work and just kind of jot down your noticings. You know, these were my favorite cards or these are the cards that 
you know, give me a sort of feeling of foreboding, or these are car cards that I don't have any feeling about at all. Right, so that's one way is to just go through the deck and look at the images and let them speak to you. Um, like everything, tarot is a relationship. And so um, there's a lot of different ways to initiate a relationship and kind of the way that you do that with tarot actually can tell you quite a bit about how you are in relationship in general. Do you like to dive right in? Do you want to sort of gobble it all up? Are you a little bit wary, right? So everything that's happening is part of, can be part of a process of learning about yourself, if that's interesting to you. Um, the other thing that I think is really interesting to do is to, um, you know, people think of tarot, you sort of shuffle the cards and you pull something at random. And um, that's a really great way to work with the cards. But another way to work with the cards that I find really powerful and potent is to do a face up card pull. So to ask yourself a question, and I do this myself sometimes when I'm, you know, having a particular feeling or in a in a mood and I can't really identify what's going on with me. And I'll ask myself a question, what am I feeling right now? And then I'll go through my deck, face up, card by card, looking for the card that most closely matches what I'm feeling. And I'll sort of make a yes, no pile and kind of whittle the yeses down to one or two cards or maybe a few or several. And then looking at those images, I might write about them. I might draw one of the cards, like literally draw in my journal with a pencil or pen. And that can help me understand how I'm feeling. You know, another question to ask like that in a face up card pull is what do I want? And so to go through the deck and see what is the card that most closely matches what I'm wanting. And then once I have that card to just look at it, right? And not try to know something about it right away, but just to look at it, maybe write about it, just starting by just describing what you see visually. I think that we really underestimate the power of an image to convey a tremendous amount of information. Um, and that that information can change at different times. I've often looked at the same card over the course of months and years and see something new in it every time I look at it. So those are just a couple of ways to kind of start working with the tarot right away um, without knowing anything about the structure of the deck or you know, the sort of rules or traditional meanings. Another way to, um, if you're interested more in like learning tarot, um, one really sort of basic thing that you can do is just start pulling a card every day in the morning. And think about that as sort of the message from your day. Now there's a few ways that you can do this. You can pull the card and just leave it out somewhere and just pull it and leave it there. And then at the end of the day, go back and look at the card and maybe do a little journaling, a little reflecting about how did this show up in my day? And you might not know what the card means and that's fine. The image is enough sort of information. So that's one way is to pull it in the morning and then write about it in the evening and see how it might've shown up through the course of your day. If you are a more sort of systematic person, um, you might want to pull the card and then do a little writing about it right away, just a few minutes, what you see visually in the card, how it makes you feel, um, a story about what might be happening in the card, right? And then you might look up the meaning, um, either in a book or online. Or, and you might also look up different versions of that card. So using Google image search or Pinterest um, to see how other artists have rendered that same card can give you some further hints and juiciness about what it means to you. And I record my daily card polls um, in a journal, the date, 
and the deck that I used and um, the card that I pulled and then whatever reflections I have about it. Uh, my tarot journal is also a place where I've collected and curated meanings from other readers who I like and follow um, so that I can start to build out my relationship with the card. But one of the most powerful things that you can do to learn the tarot and learn what the cards mean is to begin to encode the cards with your own stories and memories and associations. So for example, this is the um, Queen of Wands from the This Might Hurt Tarot deck, and it depicts a person sitting at a desk with a cat over her shoulder, and um, they're looking at a sunflower, and they're drawing a salamander on a piece of paper with pen and ink, and there's um, a little crown above their head and kind of a warm, um, orangey sky. Um, in the window behind them, right? And so this is a card to me, the Queen of Wands is very much about warmth and devotion and creativity and passion. Um, the Queen of Wands isn't necessarily a woman. Um, and that's something for, for you to develop your own relationship with. But think of a person um, that you love to be around that makes you feel um, welcome and seen and um, noticed and cared about, right? Um, and so I might think of a story from my own life of a particular person or myself when I was feeling very much in that um, kind of queen of wands mood. And I might write down a very specific moment or story and this is a way of beginning to encode our own stories and meanings and memories and associations into the card. And that way, we don't have to remember or memorize a bunch of meanings, but we see this image and we remember, oh, yeah, this makes me think of that time when and we start to, um, you can think of, of each of the cards of the tarot as like a cabinet of curiosities, right? And in the beginning, when I didn't know anything about tarot, I filled the cabinet with other people's meanings. That was kind of how I learned. Um, but as time goes by, and I continue my study, which is bottomless and endless, that cabinet starts to get filled up with so many things that are mine, colors that I see, interactions that I have, animals, um, places, people, conversations, um, phases of the moon, um, movies, people from popular culture, right, is that the cabinet of curiosities for each card gets sort of richer and more crowded and um, more personal. And that can be a really great way um, to work with tarot. So these are just a couple of ideas to get you started. I think the most important thing is to follow your own instincts and intuition. If you have a thought of, can I, the answer is just yes, you can. There are no rules with tarot. And um, if you are a very systematic person, if you learn better through a system, you might wanna do some study with books um, or get a reading from someone or practice giving your friends and family readings and um, be more systematic about it. If you're more just interested in um, working with the images as a way to, um, sort of supplement a creative practice or process or um, learning about yourself, um, you don't ever need to crack a book or know any traditional, the traditional meanings are made up too, just to say, it's just, they've been sort of passed down for a long time, but at one time they were just made up too. Um, and so really, uh, I think the best questions to go by when you're working with tarot um, are, is this a pleasure and am I engaged? and to really work with it in a way um, that answers those questions with a resounding yes. Um, so I'm wishing you every good thing. 
um, as you begin your tarot journey and um, let your practice be a pleasure.